So this is going to happen more and more. Yogis have been doing it for a long time, but they've been directed by spirit or the Christos or God to not shove it in our face. It's Baba Ji, who's 9,000 years old. If he went on TV on The Tonight Show, first of all, Jay Leno would implode, explode, and he'd have to stop telling all those corny jokes immediately. <laughs> but it's... It, it, it's, they can't do it because it would confront us too much. There's free will on this planet. And if an ageless yogi showed, yes, there are some, you can look them up, but you have to research it, that are over 200 years old and look like they're about 60 or something. And But it's the exception, and the ones that are, are eternally youthful would freak us out. You know, we, we can't handle it. It's just too scary for us. It's paradigm busting. It busts up our little Weltanschauung, our little idea, our little zeitgeist of what's going on. We have no clue. So it has to be kind of hidden. Uh, I have personally met, and yes, I grew up with a scientist father. I went to school. I got programmed like everybody else in Sweden and England and Connecticut. Can you think of any more conservative white Anglo-Saxon Protestant places in the universe than Sweden, England, and Connecticut? Come on. Sounds <laughs> like I was one hair's breadth away from going to Yale. So even in my programmed world, I managed to break out of some of that and, and actually have met with beings that can dissolve their atoms. It's time to tell all this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and they don't show themselves or they'll, they'll um, because it's not appropriate. We, we, you know, we, we, just everyone always says, why don't the ETs land on the ha ha White House lawn? Well, because they're, they're not welcome, you know. Because they know they'll get blown up. <laughs> yeah. Their bodies in the, got blown up at it, Roswell. <laughs> put, in this, put in this secret bunker over there in Langley, you know, so... Uh, um, yeah, it's not going to work. So, but this is possible for us individually. We have to make an end run around. We have to do a bypass. We don't want to be a part of this control system. The control system will kill you. Um, you know, the poor Hopi Indians are being killed by their health services. Yes, I said it. You know, the health services up there are drugging them like crazy. And what passes for health is really, you know, that I wrote an article years ago, I called it health care, question mark, more like death-promoting, unloving system, you know. Yeah, disease uh, maintenance. Yeah, disease promotion, actually. It's not even mm -hmm. maintenance. It's actually promoting it. I have a young man I just yeah. met who has a biotech company. He's a brilliant genius. And he's talking about really fully exposing that a lot of the drugs are actually what's actually causing the actual disease that they're supposed to be uh, preventing. Which that makes total sense. That is no different than the pedophile, you know, guy in Congress who's talking about we must pass, you know, so and so's law and prevent anyone ever. And then, it, of course, when he goes back to his office, he's immediately trolling online looking for little boys, you know. It's that yin and yang opposing Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde thing. You have to watch for the polarity. The universe doesn't judge. God doesn't judge yin and yang. Black and white both exist. Quote, there is no good and evil in the natural world. Watch your dog. My dog got to meet Christie's dog. And, you know, he has not met girls before. And so basically it took him about three days to, to, to not want to have sex all the time. And, uh, if they were humans, they'd have definitely been locked up <laughs> or been demonized as evil. But, right. But, they, but there's no beautiful? There's no shame. There's no shame in the natural world. And that is what we were before Adam and Eve and in the garden. We were not stupid. We were not naive. We weren't idiots. We weren't, you know, cyborgs or just dumb flesh bodies. You can be fully conscious and fully aware and still be innocent. This is why masters don't make sense to people. Why in India some of the masters are called crazy masters. Uh, they'll eat very inappropriate things. They'll walk around naked. You know, because they're living naturally. You know, what do we do? I watched a guru today, a teacher. He's a really interesting, fun guy. And somebody asked him, why do all the yoga guy yogis wear their long hair and beards? Why do you always do that? And he said, well, really, you should be asking all those that shave why they do that. 
because I am simply being natural. What God has given me, I let it grow however it chooses to do. And does it, you know, and there's some truth to that. We, we don't trust nature anymore. Nature is dangerous. If you watch your local news, every year, you don't ever see a, a story usually that talks about the miracle. A little three-year-old girl gets lost out in the mountains. She, she, she survives for three days in the Arizona heat. You, you know, you, you never see that story. They happen. Uh, but you'll see uh, hikers lost in the mountains, dangerous, helicopter rescue, water, nature dangerous. Do not go out there. There's this yeah. programming that somehow nature is dangerous. That's freaking yeah. ludicrous. Yeah, nature just like the is... chapter in your book I just read. No one's listening to the sun, how we're programmed. Oh, it's so dangerous. It's going to kill you and stay out of it. Oh, but if you don't have it, I mean, isn't that ridiculous to be programmed that nature in its perfect entirety is bad for us? But it's that time, Tobias. Hold that right there. We will be right back after this short break. Tobias Lars on Truth Brigade Radio. Right, welcome back. Ow, ow, we are talking about spirit travel adventures with the creator, Tobias Lars, tonight. Spirittravel.com is the website. That's with one T. Spirittravel.com. I'll be posting that link and many others in the text chat if you would like to join us over at truthbrigade.com. And if you would like to howl for us or have any questions, uh, please give us a call, 402-237-2525. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Tobias, isn't that silly? We're supposed to be afraid of Mother Nature, of God's creations. Yeah. And it's a programming against them. It's ludicrous. Uh, that, that chapter in my book there, and Listening to the Sun, is we've been so programmed that we fear the source of life, the physical source of life for our planetary system, all our planets, um, you know, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, whatever. I'll mess up the rest. Um, <clears throat> The sun feeds us light information, just like fiber optic cables are programming my computer right now, and I can look at pictures. Well, the sunlight is the same, much more divine program than, than what's feeding our Internet, because it is the full spectrum. The full spectrum. We need the full spectrum of light. The sun knows exactly what it's doing. And then we have this programming that the sun is dangerous, that's freaking insane. Huh. Now, what, what's dangerous and what's going to happen, and I think it's just starting to happen, but I, that was 10 years ago I wrote that, art, that chapter, is that all those SPF chemicals we put on our skin, Yeah. That, that's what actually causes the cancer. Exactly. You know? now, of exactly. course you shouldn't go out there and fry yourself. I mean, that's crazy. You need to live naturally, and there's a time for shade and nighttime. There's not constant sun on the planet. And, and so, you know, getting drunk and laying out on the beach for the first time in, you know, the summer for six hours is probably not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> or in a, a pool in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But so, Nate, Nate, the whole idea with spirit travel is let's have some fun. I mean, what's more fun than going, here comes Dakota, he's going to knock me down on the ground and, like, lick my face. <laughs> and that's fun. And you're also going to learn that these guys, and like Leighton, the director, says, the goal of WildSpiritWolfSanctuary.org is to cease to exist, ultimately, that there will be no need for him to rescue uh, these still wild animals from the people that can't have them in cities and suburbs, you know. Um, but that we go back to finding a natural way. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one. One that's coming here. All the roads we have. Who here doesn't feel sad when you see animals killed by cars? We yeah. all do. You know, mm -hmm. stonks. Uh, Bart and I drove up Oak Creek here a few days ago, and he had his. He had rented a, a car with ABS brakes, a Prius, Toyota. You know, and a skunk came out, and we got to test the brakes, and it worked <laughs> good. You know, but it was skunks die every day up that canyon. You know. And it doesn't have to be that way, because this, what I'm going to tell you now, is actually real. It exists, this technology exists, and we can have it. 
not by pounding on the government and calling them evil, not by calling the, the you know, the, the controllers and hating them, because the frequency you put out of you is what you create around you. If you put out hate towards those people that are controlling you, this is what Jesus tried to show us. Yes, don't be an idiot and don't be, you know, ignorant. Notice what's going on. That's not very nice, the fact that these shenanigans go on and mind control and government and all this kind of, you know, corruption. But if you hate it, you're actually adding more crap to that pot. It's like a giant stew. And if you don't like the stew, if you spit in it, you're not helping it, you know. So if you're putting your, adding your hatred to it, you're not part of the, pro the solution. You're part of the problem. So what you can do, our government does have anti-gravitic technology. It's had it for about 50 years. We could very easily in the next 25 years, this could happen, this could happen, if enough of us said, we want it, we want it. We could take all our highways, all our roads, all that asphalt that kills coyotes and deer and elk and, and, and you know, uh, we could change it to gravitational vehicles, anti-gravity little hover cars. Hmm. And we could just let those places become parkways full of grass. And we could float 15 feet above it. All the animals would then be able to traverse all that underneath us and be safe. This is totally possible. And before people go, oh, you're just an idealistic dreamer. I'm going to call you out on that. Then you're just being part of the problem and you've given up. Where's your guts? Where's your balls? If you've mm -hmm. given up and said, oh, I just want to sit here and complain about the government, that's what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. You know? Put your Absolutely. energy behind something that will so be a solution. Put your energy... You don't have to go out there and crusade and do stuff for a radio show like Christy, but just don't say no. Can you just be open to it? Crazy people like me and Christy and other people would be out here crusading and talking about it. If people listening could just say, yeah, that sounds good, I would definitely a add my energy or my... at least not a positive thought, perhaps, but just say, okay, I'm open. I'm open to the possibility that we could have... Uh, hovercraft in the next 25 years and change all no pollution, no need for hydrogen batteries or any of that stuff, just pure anti-gravity craft that do exist already on this planet and certainly from other civilizations across the galaxy and look up Dr. Greer's project and there's a bunch of people trying to get it out but we can have it, just as an example now if you continue to say well, the evil government won't let us have it. The evil oil people, they will never let it out there. Well, then you're adding to the problem. Mm -hmm. Because it begins with thought. It begins with an idea. Everything begins with a piece of consciousness and an idea. So fighting evil feeds evil. Noticing evil and then choosing to build your own frequency and your own feeling good and healing yourself, that solves the problem you know if i don't know how to swim and i jump in and try to save someone that's drowning that just makes two of us drowning so you better learn to swim on your own learn to swim in your frequencies how you do that how do you do this you learn to first you're waking up to all these kinds of shows we do about holy cow there is something wrong in the in, and there's something rotten in denmark there's something very rotten on the planet absolutely and then after that start healing yourself Specific meditation techniques. I've recently just put them up. I do them with clients, but the alchemyprocess.com is the most powerful process on the planet. Do I sound like an egomaniac right now or what? But I, I'm not. I'm being, I'm being truthful with that. It's the oldest process on the planet. We all have the right to do it. All that's happening in the universe is things are changing from this to that, from this to that. There's alchemy, transformation. The only constant is change. So that we cannot change, that the only constant is change, right? Mm -hmm. And so alchemy is going on all the time. You're alchemizing stuff right now. It's called digestion. It's called breathing. It's called thinking. It's called growing fingernails and hair and skin cells. You're doing mm -hmm. alchemy right now. Most of it is unconscious. We as humans are meant to do it consciously. The alchemyprocess.com will give you a direct tool to learn to alchemize crap in your life that you don't like into stuff that feels good to you. It is all energy. 
So these are practical tools. Another one is the innerbodyawakening.com. We all have an inner body. The most direct experience of actual spiritual experience, not just talking about it, not just listening to us about it, not just you know reading books about it, but actually feeling it for yourself. I'm challenging people now. 